One of the most satisfying parts about bikes is building your own bike. It feels really good to use a bike day in and day out knowing that you built it with your own two hands. But if you've never built a bike before, it can be overwhelming to start building. Luckily, Wabi Cycles is sponsoring this video and they sent over a Wabi Retro along with all the components necessary to build the bike so I can show you all exactly what the process of building a fixed gear looks like. What's up? I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. And be sure to hit that subscribe button to watch Fix Your videos just like this one every Saturday afternoon. Again, thanks to Wabi for sponsoring this video and making it possible. Be sure to check out their high-quality steel bikes at the link at the top of the description. Alrighty, let's get this thing unboxed. Wabi's always the best when it comes to packing. This is the Wabi retro frame set, formerly known as the Wabi Special. It is their lugged Reynolds 725 frame set. What I really like about Wabi's packing is that they just use these pool noodle kind of things. It just makes it a whole lot easier than having to cut off lots of bubble wrap. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's new. Oh, that's so cool. First of all, this decal is all black and it's above the clear coat so you can actually take it off and de-brand your bike if you so choose. Also, they took off the seat tube decal, which I said I wasn't a huge fan of. Wow, it's almost like they listen. So new for 2018, they renamed the special to the retro and also are these colors. This is yellow and their other color is a vintage white. And here is the fork, lugged flat crown, all the spacers included with a top cap. This fork has 32C clearance. So whenever I build a bike, I always have the headset pre-installed or installed by a bike shop. There's like two tools, they're very specific. So it's much more cost effective to just have the headsets pre-installed or installed by a shop. Now let's open up the rest of the components. We have cog and lock ring, pedal setup, logo pedals, some toes, Straps and some toe clips, so here are our pedals. The saddle, we have our brakes, brake lever, and our brake cables. Seat post and stem tubes, grips, chain, and some more brake components. And these, of course, are the Wabi Sub 15, is that what they're called? Sub 15 wheels, the nicer wheels that are insanely light. So these wheels are 20 spoke for the front and 24 spoke for the rear. It might sound kind of light on the spokes, but what Wabi does is they have these wheels machine built and then they hand tension them so that they're perfectly true. Well, probably like one millimeter out of true, but pretty dang near to perfectly true right out of the box. And lastly, here are the cranks and chainring. They're Andel track cranks, 144 BCD. I actually highly recommend these if you're on a budget. They ride just about as well as my 75s. So here are all the components. It's not a standard Wabi Retro. I do have some upgrades here. The wheels are Wabi Sub 15 wheels, which are lighter than their standard wheel set. And I also have some Continental Gator skins. Here's all the components. Now let's get to building. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm building a bike is to put the saddle on the seat post and you'll see why very soon. Put it on the clamp and then just tighten it. Doesn't really matter where it's positioned. We're not doing fit right now. We're just getting it on there. Now that we have the saddle on the seat post, the next thing I like to do is put the seat post in. And it's important to grease the seat post. If you don't, it could seize up. It could get stuck in there and you could ruin a frame set. And just to be extra thorough, get some grease inside the seat tube. Loosen up the seat collar. Slide in the seat post. I like to just go to the minimum insertion mark. Wipe off the excess grease. I like to put in the saddle and the seat post first because it makes it a lot easier to work on the bike. I use a tree because I'm too cheap to buy a $200 park tool stand that I wouldn't use often. Next up, we're going to install the fork and the headset and spacers. So what we'll do, just take off the top cap, take off all of these spacers along with the top of the headset. Next, we're going to slide in the fork and then put on the top of the headset. And to keep the fork on, slide on a stem and then tighten the side bolts. Here, it doesn't really matter 
if the stem isn't entirely aligned with the fork since this is just a temporary thing to keep the fork from falling out of the frame. Now we're going to put the wheels together. These are like a fancier set of hubs and they have Allen key bolts. Yours probably will have track bolts. Just grease up the bolts and tighten it. For these, you just hand tighten them, not putting them on yet, so we don't need an Allen key. As for greasing things, the general rule of thumb is if metal is in contact with metal, you should grease it. Of course, there are exceptions to that rule. Now, tires. So to put on the tires, I like to line up the logo and center it over the valve stem. Then just put on half of the tire. And we're gonna take the tube and our track pump. And we're gonna give it a little air to give it some shape. One and a half pumps should be good enough. Now we're just going to drop in the valve, fold the tube inside the tire, and go around and just get it inside. Next, just gonna go around the wheel and get the tube seated inside the well of the rim. And now, I like to start from the opposite end of the valve and get the rest of the tire seated inside the well of the rim. Usually when you get to the end, it will be a little bit tight. So what I like to do, I like to go around the rim and push down on the tire. That will give the tire a little more leeway to pop onto the well of the rim. And before pumping it up, just go around the rim to see if there's any tube sticking out between the tire and the rim. Because if there is, and you pump it up, it will explode, and that's a bad time. Now that it's all good, I'm just going to pump up the tires to 85 PSI for me. You can find out what PSI to pump to by looking up a bike tire pressure calculator, and it'll spit out your ideal tire pressure for maximum comfort and maximum speed. Next, we're going to install the cog, and like usual, first, we're going to Grease the threads. And as you can see, the tread pattern is going this direction. So we want the cog to be on this side so we can have the tread pattern going the correct direction. And the cog has standard threading. So just turn it clockwise. Make sure you gently put it on and align the threads so you don't strip anything. And to fully secure the cog, take your chain whip and tighten it. And of course, we're going to need a lock ring for the cog, so when you back pedal, it doesn't come off. You know the drill by now. And to put the lock ring on the wheel, it's a little bit different. It does have reverse threading, so you're going to turn counterclockwise to tighten it. Next, take the lock ring wrench, get it in one of those notches and really crank down on it. It's really important to get this thing tight because if it's not tight enough, your cog could slip, which could be really dangerous. Now that we've got our wheels together, let's go put it on the bike. Just hand tighten it for now. We'll do the final adjustments later. And when you're putting in your wheels, remember to make sure that the tread pattern faces forward. As far as tightening the axles go, just use your common sense. Don't gorilla fist it, but make sure it's tight and won't slip out. Grips can be a pain in the neck to get onto the bars. So a little trick that I like to do is to just spray a little bit of hairspray on the inside and also a little bit on the ends of the bars. What the hairspray does is that it allows the grips to slide on pretty easily. It's slippery when wet, but once the hairspray dries off, it will be sticky and keep the bars in place. And of course, to be a pro, gotta align the logos on the top. But before we put on the bars, let's first assemble the rest of our components. Next up, we have pedals, toe clips, and of course, straps. Put some grease on the bolts so they don't seize. And you can still take them off. Next. Take a toe clip and drop in the bolts. And then take the nuts and screw them into the bolt. Next, take a toe strap, slide it right through the pedal slots. Go from the outside into the spindle, so that way the buckle will be on the outside and you can adjust it. And then thread the toe strap through the buckle and you can tuck it in. Now, last component that we need to assemble before we put all of our parts on the bike is the crank set. We just gotta put the chain ring onto the drive side crank arm. And what I like to do is to put the lettering on the spindle that is parallel to the crank arm. And all you have to do is to put the male bolt on the front side and the female bolt 
on the rear. And of course we did prep this bolt with blue Loctite. Once you tighten the bolts, the blue Loctite will dry and it will lock it in that position so your chain ring won't be going anywhere. And when you're tightening the chain ring bolts, it's a good idea to go in a star formation so you can put an even stress on the chain ring. And again, when you're tightening these bolts, make it tight, but don't gorilla fist it. Now's the fun part. We've prepped all our components, now let's put the bike together. Wabi was nice enough and they pre-installed the bottom bracket, but if you're building your own bike, please do make sure that you have the right bottom bracket for the right crank set because there is a specific bottom bracket that goes with each crank set. Installing the cranks is pretty straightforward. All you gotta do is bolt it in and and I did prep this with thread locker so it won't loosen out over time. Important thing to know is that you shouldn't grease the spindle of the bottom bracket. If you do, you can easily over tighten your crank and damage it. And of course, when you're putting on your second crank, make sure that it is parallel, directly opposite from your first crank. In order to get our drivetrain to actually do anything, we need to connect the chain and to do that, we're going to have to use our chain breaker to change the length of it and shorten it because it comes with a lot of chain. And usually I like to place the axle of the wheel kind of close to the center so that way when you want to take off your wheel, you can still push it in and have some room to work with. Scratch everything that I said because apparently Wabi was very kind and they already broke and cut down the chain for me. So instead of showing you how to find the length of the chain, I'll just show you how to put it on with the chain breaker. To correctly put the chain on, make sure that it loops around the cog and then out through and over the chainstay. And to put it on, just link the chain together and then place your chain inside the chain breaker. There's these two shelves that go through the chain and align the pin up with the two holes of the two links that it'll go through. Just kind of push it down, keep it steady and gently just rotate pin into place. So after you put the pin through the links, it's still pretty stiff. We're gonna have to loosen it up. And the way to do that is on the chain breaker, there's this left notch here, slide it in, and then push the pin just a little bit. It should loosen right up. Now to link your drivetrain together with the chain, you just gotta put it on and then tension it. And that chain tension seems pretty good to me. Just make sure it's centered. Now to put on the pedals, I like to grab hold of the spindle and just gently back pedal. This way you can Get it in there, and once it's not spinning anymore from your finger force, you can then take your Allen key and finish up the job. And again, pedal backwards, holding the spindle for the non-drive side as well. Something important to note is that the non-drive side pedal spindle is reverse threading, meaning counterclockwise will tighten it. Now we're almost done with the build. The last thing that we need to do is put on some spacers, tighten up the headset, and of course, put on the handlebars. And for that, Let's take it down so we can work on it more easily. Now to finish up the front end, I like to stand over the bike. It's just much easier to access it. And what we need to do is take all of our spacers and just slide them on and take our stem and slide that on top. Get our top cap, put it on top of the stem and then tighten that down until our headset is tight enough. So the first thing you wanna do is tighten the top cap. And as you can see, I did put a couple of spacers on top of the stem so it will load the bearings more. And the general rule of thumb for how tight is tight enough is when you can't spin the spacers anymore with your fingers, then that's tight enough. And for the side bolts, before you tighten them, make sure that your stem is directly in line with your front wheel. And once that's all set, just give it a good tighten. And lastly, we have to install the handlebars. Pretty self-explanatory. Take off the clamp, get your handlebars, put them in, and then put the clamp back on with the bolts. Again, it's good practice to put your bolts on in a crisscross formation to have an even load. And I just finger tighten them at first. And for the final tightening, set the bar angle that you want, and again, fully tighten them in a crisscross formation. The main selling point about Wobbies is that they're insanely light for steel bikes. I'm guessing it's sub 20, maybe 18 pounds. Let's find out. 17 pounds, nine ounces. That is 7.97 kilos for an entire steel bike, albeit I didn't put a brake on, but that's still pretty dang impressive for a 58 centimeter steel bike. Let's see how this thing rides.
a pretty fun bike. Now, I've been riding for the past few hours and I must say, Wobby never really disappoints. This thing is something else. This Wobby Retro, the way that I have it specced here with a few upgrades is $1,270. And that might sound like a lot, but honestly, this thing rides more nicely than my $1,500 bike that I built myself and it's lugged. First of all, Wobby's weight, it's pretty dang amazing that this is a full steel lugged bike and it's only 17 pounds and nine ounces. And they're able to get down to this weight with a steel bike because it's made out of Reynolds 725. That's a much higher quality steel than 4130 Cromoli that you'll find on most steel bikes. And usually if you want a bike made out of this kind of steel and to get it lugged, you'll have to go custom. So $1,200 to $1,300 for this spec, it starts at about 1,100 I believe, is really not that bad when you compare it to the custom builds that would have a similar ride quality to this thing. And with the Wabi Retro out of the box, nothing really needs to be upgraded. It has basic, but really solid components. The only thing that I would really upgrade is the saddle, just because it's not really my cup of tea. But other than that, the wheels accelerate phenomenally because they're so light. I did ride these wheels in San Francisco, which, very hilly. And I was actually pretty dang surprised at the hills that I was able to get up. And you can see my unsponsored opinion in the link below. I'm always pretty dang impressed with Wobby and the Wobby Retro is no different. This might actually be my favorite because it has lugs. Tig Weld, functionally, it's the same. And it looks fine, but it always leaves something to be desired. And with the lugs, the bike just feels more complete. Of course, Wabi sent over the frame and the components for me to build up and to show you what building up a bike looks like. Although you can buy these complete and it is a really good buy, one of the most fun things about building a bike is building it up with your own components that you chose yourself. While these components are really good and spot on, I do find it more fun to put my own components on it. That way it feels like when you build a bike, you really make it your own. And of course you can buy the frame set separately. You don't have to buy a complete bike. Even when it is just a frame set, Reynolds 725 lugged for I think $650. That's not too bad. But again, that option is still there. If you wanna get on a nice, really lively, springy, and smooth riding bike with minimal fuss and with minimal upgrades. You can get the retro as a complete, and I do think that is still a very good buy. And thanks to Wabi for sponsoring this video. They made it possible for me to show you all how to build a fixed gear from start to finish, which a lot of you have been asking for like three years, ever since I started this channel. So please do check them out at the link at the top of the description. And maybe you could even pick up one of the nicest riding steel bikes on the markets that won't even break the bank. That's it for this video. I'm going to ride this Wabi Retro some more before I have to send it back. And maybe I'll even ask Wabi, see if we could do something so I could keep this thing because I am really loving this bike. <laughs>